Welcome back to another issue. I'm Beastie Boy. I'm Table. I'm Red. It is I, Shino Brando. And in this issue, we dive into Marvel's dumpster and pull out characters that should have stayed in the landfill. Indeed. And so I'll start this party and I'm going to bring, for those who don't know this name, do you guys know anything about Robbie Baldwin? Does his name ring a bell to you guys? Slightly. It does not. Slightly. No, I'm um, okay. Well, it shouldn't because Robbie Baldwin is Robbie Baldwin. So Robbie Baldwin, <laughs> a.k.a. Speedball, was created by Steve Ditko, a gem, and Tom DeVelco, another gem, back in 1988. He was originally made for the uh, Marvel's New Universe imprint, something that really didn't take off at the time. When he was presented, they were kind of like, ah, he's kind of lame, Steve and Tom. Uh, we're not going to use him, so we're just going to put him on the shelf here. And we'll maybe might go back to that. And they said, no, we're going to go back to it anyways. And we're just going to put him in Spider-Man because Steve Dickel's right in Spider-Man. So they're like, okay, cool. Let's just use him. They tried to use him in the pages of Spider-Man to kind of sell him. That didn't work. After that, he would have his own miniseries for a long time. Well, I can't even say a long time. It was really a short time. Even though it was being printed, no one was paying attention. To the point where he got shifted to a team of edgelords the most edgelordish team in the 90s that were edgelord-ish Avengers. And they were known as the New Warriors. And they, too, were equally as lame. What happened to the old Warriors? You know what? So the team's name, the New Warriors, is kind of a shtick at the the whole Avengers being old Warriors. So there were the New Warriors. Get it? Bad? Okay. Barely. But I kind of want to add on the New Warriors was Namorita. Oh, yeah. She she was on the New Warriors at at one point, too. Yeah, we talked about that in our Mutants episode. Despite his late entry in the late 80s and his run through in the 90s, Speedball would kind of make a mark on some audience members. Some people kind of liked him for some reason. Um, who? I, I, that's, I don't like, it's hard to say, but there's some. There's a subset of fans out there who kind of like the B and C characters of Marvel. Speedball being like a C tier kind of dude. I mean, his powers are okay. It's like he, I don't know how to explain it, but like he, he uses kinetic energy to bounce off things or throw it like, it's just kind of okay. He ricochets a whole lot. If that works out for you, right? For some reason, they just, he seemed to be a very likable character. So people kind of just held on to him, but he just re- never really made a mark anywhere. And so, because the new warriors were making a mark anywhere, they decided to use him in Marvel Civil War. You guys remember Civil War, right? I remember mm-hmm. a Civil War too, yeah. You remember, remember that the new warriors were the, were the center of, of the Civil War, right? Them they're versus intrinsically Nitro. important to how that Soviet Accords go down, yep. Exactly. So, the reason why they used the new warriors in that for the storyline is because that was their easy way to kind of just destroy and erase the new warriors. Literally blow them off the map. Yeah, get rid of them. Speedball. Robbie being the only survivor, really, because Marvel seemed to really like him. And so that's the end of part one. Part two starts here. So back in 94, Scott Lobdell and Chris Bacciallo were writing for Generation X, which was like, you know, the the new era of like mutants. So you had the X-Men, you had the new mutants, and then you had Generation X. So they were writing that and they had made a character named Penance and she's fucking awesome. Failing to take off really in times in, as time went on, she became a totally different character. Her name's now The Hollow, totally different. But at first, she was known as Penance. Fast forward down to 2007 to Civil War. Paul Jenkins <laughs> and Steve Leiber have the bright idea to rewrite Speedball and rename him Penance. Part three now. So, this is where they try to sell him off again. So, now being the survivor of what went down in Civil War, I can't remember exactly where it was, but I just remember it's a you know, school bus of children. Bunch of, you know, bunch of casualties. No one's happy about it. He has survivor's guilt. So he decides to shave his head bald and wear a costume that has thorns on the inside that will purposely poke him and torture him at all times so he always feels the pain of what he caused. And then he will be known as penance. Ah. Could I suggest therapy instead? So what if I told you, Table, that he went to therapy and this is what led him to this. Therapy told him to make a costume to hurt himself. Do you not? Serious. Go to different therapy. Mm-hmm. That's bad. Yeah. No. Um. So I much so that's that that's how therapy works. Yeah. Hey, listen, man. So the costume, the costume changed so much mm-hmm. that it just looks like an edge lord on the outside. Yeah. It leaves nothing there for you to be like, this is cool. First and foremost, I don't even know how he sees out the fucking thing because there's no, there's no eyelids. Vision is for people who didn't yeah. survive horrible. Yeah. Therapy. There's no, there's no eye holes. There's no nothing there. The costume just, just has spikes picking. Like it just. He's so stuck in the past. He wouldn't let himself see the future. Yeah. It's so lame. And so don't it's just like. Don't give them that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's that the makes worst sense. Idea. They can't have that. 
and so because the costume was now torturing him, it was able to let him unleash his full potential. So his power set changed from just bouncing kinetic energy to just being an outright like tank. He went through it, a second mutation. But it's not really a second mutation. It's just like it's just I don't even know how to explain it. But like he's in so much pain that he exerts everything in such a high frequency that it's just different. I, that's that's the best I can explain it to you. I I don't know. Emotional trauma, physical results. It happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. But they shouldn't have done this. So he went on as penance for a long time. And I say a long time, longer than he needed to fucking be. So much so that people were like, this guy is so 90s, it hurts. It's 2007. It should be illegal to be that 90s right about now. He should be locked <laughs> up for being that 90s. It's bad. It's yeah. super fucking bad. So prison, he's already built himself a prison. Exactly. <laughs> and so later on, Speedball, finally getting the therapy that he needed, dropped the moniker of penance. And put on his old costume, well, like a variation of it, and his powers went back to just being speedball somehow. He took a break, had a Kit Kat, he's good to go. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like he became a totally different character in Civil War, and then they just retconned him back to normal with little to no explanation. By the way, his art, well, his his look during Civil War was supposed to be based on Edward Norton. Take that if you will. I don't know. So my question Why? to you is the Legion of Superheroes has a very similar character with very similar powers called Bouncing Boy. Mm-hmm. Which one came first? Bouncing Boy. Many years beforehand. Yeah, that's what I figured. Mm-hmm. House so of speedball. Ideas. House of Stolen so, Ideas. So as, as the record goes, in 1988, they tried to sell Speedball to another imprint. That didn't work. So they tried to sell him in the 616 and that didn't work. So they shipped him to another team and that didn't work. So they made him a totally, a totally different character, and that didn't work. And they brought him back to Speedball, and here we are. <laughs> Damn. And that's my useless character. <laughs> oh, that's just... Yeah, that sucks. That guy sucks. Wild Sorry, shit. <laughs> yeah. Sucks and if, if you're a fan of Speedball, you, like, no one should be a fan of Speedball. <laughs> hey, if you're a fan of Speedball, you should hit the subscribe button. Man, don't forget to like the video. <laughs> oh yeah, and if you are, if you are, you don't know, fight me in the comments. Go ahead, drop a comment in there. Tell me why you like speedball so much. Tell me why I should like speedball so much. Tell me why I should like pendant so much. Like in theory, I can understand wanting a character to actually explore the emotional ramifications of what they've been through. That's a cool idea because comics sometimes glosses over that in the name of cool shit, which. Mm. I love cool shit as much as the next person, but like, it's nice to see that, you know, some people do experience what they do and then have to deal with it. Uh, Unfortunately, they chose to do it like that, which is yeah. bad. Oh, I also forgot to mention that during his time as Penance, Robbie had grown a fondness for s and uh, s and I don't want to know. My I actually man's a gimp. He, he actively enjoyed hurting himself mm. with the costume and mm. exerting pain on others. Mm. That, was, that was Robbie's thing for a while. Uh, yeah, man's a gimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Switch? All right. Mm -hmm. A lot of information I needed. And that, my friends, is the shit I brought to the table. Damn. That is a... Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Beastie, what comic bones did you dig up? Well, as we're speeding away from that one, um, <laughs> I brought the uh, very, for some people, famous, but, you know, for us in this part of town, infamous Dark Hawk. Or uh, no, you pronounce it wrong. You pronounce it wrong. Dark, I dark, told you, dark hawk. Dark, don't forget yeah. it now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> as most people will know. It, but yes, which I found out this uh, this character is it's fifty fifty in the, the comic universe. So people either love him mm -hmm. or are big fans of him still, or mm -hmm. people are like, why do you exist? That I think is the correct question to ask. <laughs> right. there, nobody should be a fan of Dark Hawk. Nobody. <laughs> you might want to talk to the fans of him then, because that's I, there's some fans that are still out there for some reason. All right. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you who made this uh, very interesting character Mis choice. Mistake? Mistake? Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. Sure. So he was created by Tom DeFalco and, oh, that one. and Mike Manley. <laughs> So with Dark Cox, what did she say? <laughs> March, yes. 1, March 1991. So that's when it got released. Those are the two famous people that created this guy. So, so far, as a ready theme, we have Tom DeFalco to blame. Okay, continue. <laughs> Tom DeFalco and the 90s is who we have to blame currently. Yes. <laughs> the 90s and Tom DeFalco were merged together, and then it was all of these. God damn it. So his original name is Christopher Chris Powell, but his aliases for his secret identity have been Buckethead. D.H. from Deloner's number issue number one comic. D.H. Dr yep. <laughs> listen, listen. Drug Hawk Edgeman with a hyphen in between. Edgeman! Edgeman! So yep. cool! <laughs> Falcon and the Powell. Sorry, what was that? Uh, what was before the Powell? <laughs> Falconer. So Falcon, E.R. The Falconer. So that's a, yeah. a profession. 
What up, DH? <laughs> Someone just was like, I can't pronounce your full name, so it's DH. That's all it is. Someone said drug hawk in one of these aliases, man. What if I told you a Spider Man? You know what? I already love it. <laughs> I can't even fight that now. <laughs> the fact that it was Spider Man, that's funny as hell. Oh Man, my god. <laughs> Yo, he was a whole bully. <laughs> and he knows it's it. Really funny, though. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> yep, what's up, are... guys? It's the Edge Man. <laughs> <laughs> these are all actual aliases for him, so. <laughs> Woo! All right. Oh, man. But yeah, uh, let's get into a little, a little bit of the origin, shall we? So um, Chris Powell, as we know him as, you know, Buckethead boy, he was the teenage son of Mike Powell, who was a cop, and Grace Powell, a district attorney. So, you know, right into the whole government system. So, you know, a cap, right? Yeah, exactly. You exactly. got a real judicial family. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. But also following his younger twin brothers, John and Jason, to also like going to amusement parks and all the stuff, hanging around those that kind of area. Chris had discovered his dad was taking bribes from a mob boss called Philippe Bazin. Of Don't points. take bribes from a Frenchman. Come on. He, he did, though. Phil Funny enough, Bazin? Phil, Philippe Bazin. While trying to escape from his brothers and the Bazin hench. Bazin's henchman. I don't know how you pronounce the last name. I'm just trying my best here. I hear but, you. But yeah, Chris discovered an amulet that transposed him into Dark Hawk armor. When his father disappeared after Chris saw him, he swore to use the Dark Hawk armor as an edge against crime. I love you're committing to this. <laughs> I am fully committing. I don't even care. <laughs> Commit to the bit. If, if people get mad, put it in the comments. I don't even care. <laughs> That's right. Would you be surprised, though, that he often teamed up with Spider-Man, as well as part of the new Warriors, befriended as well as Speedball, Nova, and later... No kidding! Because oh. fucking DeFalco! Of course. So, he, yeah, he was with Spider-Man, or had been teamed up with Spider-Man, Speedball, Nova, and Turbo, out of those guys. Turbo! <laughs> oh. All of these guys. Yo, that little Jack poured Nova into this. Oh, fuck. Nova was just like the added Nova addition. Nova was like, so much better. Literally. They needed someone who was cool to be invited. <laughs> Dude, we got Spider-Man! What do you want? What do you need? <laughs> Name Marita. Yeah, Spider-Man clearly wasn't working, okay? Name Marita oh didn't do it. Didn't meet the cool factor. <laughs> Nova was, and he was like, you know what? Let's just throw him into comics. Oh, man. Funny Spider's enough, not he, selling him, but Nova will. Funny enough, though, he had some interesting villains as well, such as the main roster, which was Hobgoblin and mm -hmm. Tombstone, who were wanting to get the amulet as well, but they never really succeeded in getting it. So he even get his own main enemies. He got fucking like Spider Man's leftovers. Basically, yeah. Would you believe that for what the comics are going? Well, issue number one, his most popular, per se, popular issue number one is going for. Do tell. Please okay. don't say it's, don't don't be in the triple digits. Ew, dude, it, it is, it is. It's like a, it's a mid triple digits. So if you okay, dig, if you, do you want the you backstory want on guess. why this is the thing? Mm, go ahead. So the backstory on why Dark Hawk number one is worth mm -hmm. so much is just like in the age of Bitcoin, people are like to the moon with like Dogecoin and all these meme coins. Well, you know, hardcore comic collectors and those that buy like first appearances and want to make money off of it kind of are doing the same thing. So everybody yeah. is buying Dark Hawk number one, driving the price up to see how high they can get this book. Using Dark Hawk as a stock? Kind of, basically. So be, even more with that story, too, the comic buyers were buying them in, like, bulks, per se, as, like, Reddit's kind of mentioning. So people were just holding on to them a lot into the 90s. And then around the time when Marvel declared bankruptcy in 1997, <laughs> the Spe final issue... Speaking of, they almost got yeah. bought by Michael Jackson in 1997. Take that I, in. I remember that, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, also with Dark Hawk ending with issue number 50, that's where, like, it finally kind of stopped at that point. There wasn't many issues going around, so, like, people were just finding, like, dollar versions or dollar bins of the comic around. But... <laughs> It's now gotten to the point in of recent uh, findings of eBay selling points. Yeah, yeah. If you're finding a Dark Hawk issue number one, a CGC 9.8 mint sealed, all that stuff, the highest one that's been found of a, this recording is $561.49. Oh, that's fucking stupid shit. This is so dumb. This is really <laughs> That is before this shipping and anything in the States. What if I told you that... You know, at the beginning of this Backstreet Boys participation mm. concert, right? A at the beginning of all of this, I looked into buying a copy of Dark Hawk number one. No, you didn't. And when I looked at it, uh -huh. a number one, a CGC graded, I think rating around a 9.1 or, you know, 
uh, yeah. high eight mm-hmm. was still a hundred and twenty dollars, and that seems to be the fluctuating number of like it. Honestly, if it's not sealed or like you know graded properly, it can be like roughly twenty ish dollars in like USD. But in other points, it'll be like sixty or hundreds and stuff like that. So like that's it a, does fluctuate. That's expensive toilet paper, man. It is. It is. But this is the most expensive one that it's almost six hundred dollars graded. My guy, top rating. Uh, these guys are hoping Dark Hawk makes it to MCU. I don't want this. <laughs> I'll hey, tell you hey, that much. What, what if I told you? <laughs> apparently, there was talks of it getting. I know. I know. Serious. I know. Been, I know. There has know. been many a talk this, about Dark listen. Hawk coming to the MCU. We're at the point and, now. We're using everybody else. We we are now getting <laughs> to the to the Moon Knights, the Shang mm. Chi's. We're using all the other guys now. So I mean, Dark Hawk is on the horizon. I will <laughs> tell you, the moment yep. Dark Hawk makes an appearance or they mention the amulet, that book a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. They so have stupid. to. I can't wait for the era of Sleepwalker. Teaming up with Tom Holland Spider Man. I oh. don't want that. Mm-hmm. Don't want that. <laughs> I don't. Dark Hawk's movie will feature Spider Man to sell that movie. Stop <laughs> Just stop. Don't put it into the ether. I'm sorry. If they, I said if they hear it. you and they say that, <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> Shh. Feige might hear you. The House of Mouse might hear you. What do you mean? The House Little of Feige. Stolen ideas. <laughs> Hey, Great. speaking of things that Mickey Mouse shouldn't have his hands in, Table, what did you bring? <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a hard left here, boys, girls, and other associated listeners. You see, in 1986, Marvel decided that they were going to do a book called The Nom. Oh. This is just the Vietnam War. Um, now, guys, it's... I don't think you should be doing a, a story about that. Now, I could have almost forgiven it, if it was like written directly after or during and it was a propaganda book because those happen still bad all propaganda is bad and the vietnam war was especially bad let's be clear but at least you can go okay that's why you made it but no this was written 20 years after the fact it was primarily made at least initially by vietnam vets so i guess they wanted to express their stories or whatever which Larry, yeah okay. Larry Hammer being one of them. but guys Vietnam War was bad. I don't think it's a hot take to say it was bad and the U.S. shouldn't have done it. People did really fucked up things. And the people who actually live in Vietnam are still dealing with the consequences of the chemical weapons that were used during that war. Bad. So this book was designed as a monthly release regular. It was a regular comic. It wasn't a special series or something. There were over 60 issues when it stopped. It basically had a month time between each, like both real world and in book between each issue and it dealt with stuff like shitty COs, it dealt with combat as it was and then it dealt with things like you know man civilians sure did hate the vietnam war huh both sides which yeah i wonder why the book references real events actual real vietnam war events and it also Larry Hama, the lead writer at least initially says that the 23rd which is the unit we follow the 23rd infantry like their actions were based to some extent on fact yeah because larry hammer served like a long yeah. time too yeah mm. so did doug murray who yeah. was also involved in the project yeah and michael gordon was the original artist though i saw no mention of him being a veteran himself surprisingly the book actually sold all right at first its very first issue outsold x-men that month the whole point for some of the creative team was that they wanted to write things that weren't superheroes And they wanted to write their own personal experiences. And so we follow private first class Edward Marks. Sometimes it diverges to other characters for other stories. I just, this was a bad idea of a book. And you know what? Eventually, people caught on to that. The creative team changed over time, in part due to personal differences, in part due to getting involved in other projects. And the sales started to fall for, again, obvious reasons. The more time actually separated from the war and being a part of that propaganda machine, I imagine left a bad taste in a whole bunch of people's mouths. Yep. Yeah. And based on reviews and stuff, the people who liked it were also Vietnam vets who saw their own experiences in the stories, which totally fair. Like apparently from their perspective, it was very accurate, which is kind of confusing given that this was written under the comics code. So Mm. no drugs, sex or excessive violence, which this is the Vietnam War. What? Mm. Yeah, mm. I think some key information, but mm. yeah, <laughs> so, key, key information you say, <laughs> more like a key generation. 
So Doug Murray left the project due to some editorial changes in like policy at Marvel. And as a result, Don Daly took over and he was like, actually, I think we should bring in superheroes to Vietnam. Mm. No. This doesn't bode well. Which superheroes did they bring to Nam? Most notably, the Punisher. Now, um, I get it. Well, it's part of his backstory, but... Superhero is a loose term here, but okay. Huh? He is an anti-hero. I'm not going to say that the book was not racist before this point, because it definitely, definitely was. You know how comics in the 80s drew Asian people? Yeah, 70s there's a lot of that. Yeah. So just looking at a page, you go, mm, racist. Bad. But do you want to know who, in the special series, The Punisher Invades the Nam? Do you want to know who Frank Castle goes up against? Who does he go up against? I honestly don't have an answer for you. A Viet Cong sniper who hides in trees and is known as the monkey. Oh, no, no, no. We stopped right here. (sighs) Oh, man. Interestingly, interestingly, Uh he also (laughs) wears a talisman with a monkey skull on it. Oh, man. And apparently... Frank Castle takes this. No, he doesn't. And no. this is where years he later the... he gets oh. his skull motif from. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> he got his. Is is that where Frankencastle comes from? No, Frankencastle comes after uh, Deken chops into pieces and he gets reformatted into a fucking Frankenstein kind of monster and becomes hey, Frankencastle. Hey, you know that character you just said? Yeah, I remember him. Oh. Oh, oh. Actually. So. Oh. The Punisher was brought in to the Nam in order to sell the book. Mm-hmm. Guess what? It didn't fucking sell for some reason. No, but... because it deals with fucking monkey skulls. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and while initially Punisher Invades Nam was intended to be a three series special, it ended up being much longer than that. And the series conclusion, there was an epilogue that was published under just Punisher. And it was called The Punisher in the Nam Final Invasion, which included the issues 85 and 86 of the Nam, which never got published because that's where the series died. Good. This was bad. Mm-hmm. This was a bad call. This is full of bad takes. 100%. I do not want to say that army veterans can't tell their stories and can't express, you know, what they went through because everyone's experiences are to some extent valid. But Vietnam, I guess credit where it's due, Murray, Doug Murray. If he had continued with the project, he had intended for Ed Marks, the main character, to come back to Vietnam as a reporter and, like, address Agent Orange as a subject, which would have been fucking cool to see, I guess. But this Mm. was not Marvel's greatest idea. And it flopped as it deserved to in the end. Though it sold way too well for way too long. What if I told you? That to this mm-hmm. day, used copies, beat up copies, toilet paper, essentially copies like better off used as pulp copies of anything that has anything to do with nom, early Punisher stuff, that entire crossover thing you just talked about. This market near us eats it up. Anything G.I. Um, Joe, anything Marvel Special Soldiers, everything. Speaking of, about to say that whole nom book got reformatted into G.I. Joe. People like propaganda, unfortunately. They do. They Mm. like war stories and they don't care about, you know, literally a whole bunch of people who were dying for no reason, I guess. And if memory serves me right, Marvel, like, just, and by a handful of years ago, I mean probably nine or eight years ago, Marvel Mm. collected at least most of Nam in what was essentially an omnibus. Yeah. Yeah. Book ran for seven years and it had three volumes. Like. That's a lot. That's a lot of books. That's a Mm. lot of stories. About things it's a weird choice to make a comic book about. Yeah. Uh, But also thank you because it became G.I. Joe and that's that's way better. That's true. (laughs) Way better. And apparently Vietnam vets consider it on par with Platoon for accuracy in terms of experience. So that's something, I guess. If anyone tries to do the same thing with like Afghanistan or something, I will actually lose my entire No, we don't want to do that. No, no, no. that's, (laughs) That's no good. No. Yeah, listen, no. Marvel, no. keep your propaganda no. next to a character named Tony Stark, and now that he's gone, leave him alone. Most Marvel's at least a little propaganda, but, like, this stopped pretending to be anything else. On other notes, Red, you mentioned Frankencastle as relevant to you. Why? So, the character who chopped up Frank Castle, Sheena, mm-hmm. what was that character's name? Ken. 
Yeah, okay, hang on to his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Jeez. So, the character that I brought that we had the unfortunate run-in with on our itty-bitty nerdy committee on twitch.tv slash nerd crusade. Nice. In X-Men Legends number one, we ran into a character named Adam X. Oh, Christ. And Unfortunately, so, we did, yes. I believe it's time for some context. Adam X was created by Tony Daniel and Fabian Nizeza. Nizeza, um, yeah. There you go. Thank you. He first appeared in X-Force Annual number two. Our Mm -hmm. good, good, sharp, sharp boy started as one of these several children created from the DNA of Emperor. Sheena, what's that? The Ken. And Catherine Summers. Now, any idea on why they might have combined DNAs like that? Uh, Because the Ken's not very good at seduction. Because the Ken's a horny. What if I told you both those answers entirely wrong? Oh, no. (laughs) Deken has his ways with whoever he wants. Catherine Summers goes on to make more Summers children later on in life or a previous life. Bellier, yes. But Mm -hmm. he was brought into the Deken family lineage because they wanted to bring the X gene into the Shi'ar Empire. The Shi'ar royal family. This retcon's stupid. Okay. And you know what they say about royals keeping it in the family? It applies Uh, in space, too. Okay. May I request that this does not be the case right now when we go (gasps) back and burn Marvel to the ground? Oh, no. (sighs) You may, but we should listen. So, having no knowledge of his earthly parentage, Adam was raised on a farm in, and pardon my pronunciation, Trishara, C-H apostrophe R-E-E-S-H-A-R-A. I'll take your word for it. By a character named as Jonath, who stole him fresh out the test tube and raised him as essentially a farm boy. Test tube. Decanted. He wow. escaped off of this planet mm-hmm. after an Imperial Guard assault on his village on this planet. And so fled into space. After being contacted <laughs> in space by a mutant known as Martin Strong. Mm-hmm. Anybody got a guess on what Martin Strong's powers are? Being strong. His brain, immaculate. His hands and feet, shark fins. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. I need to know more about Martin Strong yesterday. What? I have Martin I Strong know. had to build himself a body, you know, with real fingers and, you know, digits. Mm-hmm. Because obviously that body wasn't working very well, so he built himself one. Now Martin wow. Strong had called out to Adam, but Adam doesn't read directions very well because why? Because he's a Summers. Uh- <clears throat> So instead of going to the Xavier Institute for Gifted Children, he went to Alaska. God damn it. (laughs) Why did he go to Alaska, pray tell? I'm so glad you asked. According (laughs) to official sources, the book that it's in, and the Marvel Wiki, the exact Mm -hmm. reason follows these three words. I know this because it hurts. Go ahead. For some reason. That's that's the only explanation. (laughs) Yes. No, yes. They in the in the comics in yes, the fucking, yes. in panel no yeah, no no in yes, panel yes uh-huh. they said for uh-huh. some reason there you got it you got it somehow Palpatine has returned same vibe you <laughs> nailed it nailed it <laughs> House of Stolen Ideas my ass in Alaska he would oh, fight a character named Eric the Red for some reason Eric we're familiar oh, with Eric yes good old good old Eric the Red again <laughs> Eric the Red is literally everyone's fucking like jabroni. Eric the Red is a big jabroni. He looks like if Speedball took another crack at that gym suit, but in red. Oh! (laughs) And armor plated. Damn. And he is under the command of Emperor... Who's that word? Dickin. (laughs) Every time. Dickens? That's what he'd be giving out all the time! Okay, I'm done. This would later evolve to their chase of the (laughs) Emkron crystal. Wait, did you say... Oh, wait. Oh, no. You passed it wrong. (laughs) Shino, how's that word pronounced again? Ah, uh, Macron Crystal. Macron. Macron. Ah, I see. That, yes. that just gave me, like, flashbacks. Oh, God. <laughs> just hearing that name. Now, this is where we do some time travel. It's like mm. skipping ahead. When we ran into Adam X, mm-hmm. this is about where we are running into him shortly after Martin Strong called him. Now, it wasn't in Alaska? Don't know. For some reason. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we get the full knowledge and a little bit of the backstory of Adam X. And I think I know everything I need to know about this man. That's correct. However, there is a certain feature in the Summers family that mm-hmm. is pretty cool, and in my personal opinion anyway, and makes it so the Summers brothers can't hurt each other. Yeah. And Corsair, because I guess Corsair counts, thanks. Because, because oh. Daddy. Thanks, yeah. Dad. Damn. But like, it doesn't work on their grandparents. It only works on the brothers plus Corsair. 
Wild. So, yes, he is the genetic brother of Cyclops, Vulcan, and the son of Corsair. Don't. You left out Havoc. Never get Havoc. <laughs> never, leave out, never leave out Alex Summers. He's the, you remember he's the, Adam X, but not Havoc? Not Alex, Alex is the only good Summers brother in, in the whole group. This is why Adam X is the other, other, other Summers brother. Summers brother, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this place. Why oh, are we man. Here? The X-Men oh, have man. always been a soap opera, and the yep. entire Summers family, like, from grandparentage to the Shi'ar Empire, is exactly why they always need to continue to be a soap opera. I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now, once Mr. Sinister ever sees Adam X on site, it's like he's instantly fapping, because that is his Mr. wish. Sinister? Adam, yeah, Adam X is Mr. Sinister's wish, dude. <laughs> he wants perfect Summers DM reason, and I don't know why. Now, those sexy Summers... <laughs> it was in that, it was on our show that we ran into the pronunciation of the character you just mentioned. Which one? I believe Ken? that character is named Mr. Sinister. Oh, Mr. Sinister. Sinister. Not the Prime Minister. I, Prime Minister of Sinister? The Sister Prime Minister? <laughs> I believe you. However, if it's Peter Parker, Fing Fang Foom, it's Mr. Sinister. There you go. Adam oh, X lie. is still alive in main continuity, not even yep. in flashbacks. But who? But why? Him recently. He is on Krakoa with the rest of the X everybody. He is stuck in Mojo World. That's where he belongs. Mojo Jojo? That's where he belongs. No, it with gets, Powerpuff it gets Girls. Better. It gets better. Okay. He okay. is stuck against his will doing live commentary of Mojo World shows. Oh, oh that's what Adam X deserves. Okay. This, wow. is this has a happy ending. This is a happy ending. As, as a sports commentator Good. on Mojo World. Good. Excellent. That's all he deserves. This is great. I love to hear this. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy. Internally, I'm happy. This one sparks joy. I do hate is... this. However, that is one of the funniest things I've ever heard. That is the so too long, didn't read version of Adam X. So, and in, uh, in all of this, we learned that what I brought to the table was some dude who just can't get it right at mm -hmm. all. We then had the, inc the incredible Dark Hawk. Mm hmm. And the in, and knowing that his number one issue is worth way more than the character is, and then then we take a trip to Vietnam. For some reason, we made a comic about about a, about a country that was under some turmoil. Don't know why this was marketable, but we made it marketable. You said and exactly, then it turned into, You said exactly the reason. Uh -huh. For some reason. For some reason. For some reason. Yeah. And then that had an happy ending by becoming GI Joe. And then and then we learned we learned about Adam X. Although we didn't need to learn about Adam X, but we learned about Adam X and that now oh, he works for he works for Sports Center on TSN. <laughs> well, I'm happy about in this. Mojo World in Mojo World. In Mojo World, I'm happy about this. <laughs> uh, out of all out of all these ones, Adam X one had is is the one that brought the most joy to me because this guy is literally just an anchor now, and that's all we need. He's Ron Burgundy. Oh my God. <laughs> yep, Ron Burgundy in Mojo World. Adam X is Ron Burgundy. So leave in the comments who was the shiniest turd out of them all. Oh, With that in mind, Beastie, if you please. Oh, man. I just can't wait to hear all these fights about, uh, you know, Darkhawk and Adam X. But... It's all worthwhile after all. Exactly. I will pay for that issue tomorrow. But if you'd like to hear us do some more roastings or appraisals of certain characters, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can tune in every Wednesday and you can catch us streaming live on Mondays and Thursdays at twitch.tv slash Crusade. You can all also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates and join our Crusader chat on Discord by checking our link tree in the description below. And you can download any previous episodes or listen on your mobile device through anchor.fm or search Nerd Crusade on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, fellow Crusaders. I want the US one versus the Fast and Furious franchise, and that's to be continued. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, go ahead and button mash a thumbs up. If you want to swing by when we have a new video, web up the sub button. Oh, and while you're at it, hit the bell to be notified. Bye. Oh, no!